Hello, this is saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is a conversation in jazz, where we are promoting jazz through telling the stories. Today, we are presenting part one of our two-part interview with trombonist, composer, and arranger, Mr. Greg Boyer. We ask you to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so we can let you know when we are posting another video or going live. We also ask you to donate to our Cash App in order to support the channel and help us to produce future videos. Our Cash App is dollar sign Jazzology 101. That's dollar sign Jazzology 101. Thank you. Enjoy the video. Hi, this is saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is A Conversation in Jazz. Today, we have the wonderful trombonist, composer, and arranger, the one and only big brother, Mr. Greg Boyer. What's up, good brother? How's it going, man? How you doing? Surviving in this ice and snow. <laughs> <laughs> so you have I'm, to I, add an extra 15, 30 minutes to everything you do when weather gets like exactly. this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad to have you on here, man. It's yeah. an honor. My honor. You know. Oh, man, too. Thank so, you for the invite. I appreciate yeah, sure. that more than anything. So what we do, the conversation in jazz is about get the stories behind the story. So, yes. so we're gonna go through your lineage or your history. Well, certainly. And and we're gonna unravel yeah. some things <laughs> that we you didn't know. know. Everything's short of throwing anybody under the bus. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my first question is, yes. what is it like being Greg Boyer? <laughs> Man, I'm a father, a husband. Mm -hmm. I cut my own grass. Mm -hmm. I take my own garbage out, man. Mm -hmm. Being Greg Boyer is, yeah. I, I, would, I wouldn't call it special. <laughs> you wouldn't call it special? No, no, no. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> so uh, your experiences, the wonderful experiences, I mean, just in a nutshell, how, how has your road been in music? It's been crazy. I mean, anybody that does this for a living, they're going to have ups and downs, highs, lows, busy, not busy, um, ooh, ah moments, and other moments where you just feel like you just grind it. Yeah, so. absolutely. I remember when I, I think I met you when you had that white car. You remember that car? It was a long time ago. It was it a white was, car. It uh, was uh, a Sterling. Yes. That's what it was. That's, Man, that's way back. Yeah, that's when we met. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember that white car. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny thing is, that was, they put a Rover badge on that in England, but when they got okay. it over here, it was a Sterling. It was a, it was a joint venture between Rover and Acura. Okay. So it had all of the, the muscle and the kick and the yeah. smooth that you get in the Acura. But it had all that electrical trouble. Yeah. And you <laughs> and also you also drive motorcycles. You you like ride motorcycles. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you still do that? No, no, no. I got rid of my. Um, <laughs> I had two of them. And yeah. You was a rider. Yeah. Oh man. Shoot, man! I used to throw my horn on the back over the strap like you know Robin Hood's arrows, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> and just take that bike and just hit the road. Yes, sir. And if didn't have to dress up for a gig, man, I take that bike. And, and just yeah. ride down there, but you yeah. know the things where you have to wear a suit or anything yeah, like that, yeah. you can't. <laughs> right. no. So you are you a native Washingtonian? Uh, native enough. Native enough. I'm where from, were you born? I'm from Bryan's Road, Maryland. Okay. And that's in um, south of D.C. in Charles County. You okay. Know, everybody knows where Waldorf is. Where okay. you know it's a suburb of Waldorf. <laughs> so when did you get? To, did you grow up in D.C.? <clears throat> I mean, did you grow up like around D.C.? Yeah. Yes, so, I did. Really. Yeah. So what was it like growing up in this area, in D.C.? Well, Back, you, know, you know, I didn't have access to the city like I did when I got older, you know. Okay. I'm the country's a chicken coop. <laughs> See, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, but I, I grew up, and I was probably musically curious from the get-go. Okay. You know, I would, like, put nails in the bed and tie rubber bands around them and pitch, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And pitch them and everything. So uh -huh. that one's a G, that one's a D yeah. and stuff. And and I taught myself how to play anything that, you know, made a sound. I started out as an alto player. 
Oh, well, we gonna. I heard, I just learned. I I, I learned about that. We, I'm gonna ask you about that. We are gonna get there. Okay. But I'm gonna ask you. About that. <laughs> I just want to get some of your background. Yeah. So now, were you? Did you come up in a time before Go Go? We know that this DC is known for Go Go. Yeah. Do you remember pre Go Go? Oh yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, man. So what was the I music? Mean, I mean, I started. The... I started playing in the formerly trained and everything in 1968. So I was, I was yeah. 10 years old. Okay. And so. I got years, man. Hey, man. Don't tell <laughs> nobody, baby. <laughs> no, I, I look at it. But you look way. good. You, you, look you don't yeah. get to be this age by being a fool. Gotcha. So, no doubt. you know, I, I, I wear these 62 years with a, you know, as a badge of honor. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You're doing well. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, uh, now, going back to Go Go. Yeah. So, how did. Uh, you, did you see Go Go evolve, like from the from the embryonic stages? Of, oh yeah, you know. How did that How did that happen? Well, I didn't go go see one. I heard about it. You okay. know, you hear about Chuck Brown. You know, he's got this thing up there, and is I don't think they the official name of it wasn't Go Go at the time. It was just something that he did that nobody else was doing. And it sounded different. And it sounded different. Wow. So, of course. You know, being the movement that it was, a lot of the young boys gravitated toward that. And Trouble Funk was one of those bands. Okay. Now, that was the first go-go band I saw live. They came down to Waldorf, you know, down in my neck of the woods. How, how old were you then? Ooh, maybe early 20s. Okay. And I was like, okay, you know, I can get to that, you know. It, it was funky. But you know, being a jazz head that I was, man, uh -huh. I like. But they ain't really doing nothing. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, you know, some, some yeah, 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 Berkeley <laughs> kind of stuff, right? Because yeah, yeah. I was, you know, maybe a couple of years. Yeah, I had already um, graduated from high school and I was in college at the time. So, and that's when you heard Gogo. And that wasn't where I heard it. That was when I heard. Yeah, it, when you when heard, I was yeah, down there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. and um. But I was like, yeah, yeah, I was, I was a snob about it, man. I, I'll be up front. You, you, but, was, you was a jazz elitist? But <laughs> I was still doing this, man. I'm yeah, like, yeah. it must be something about it because my head won't stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and, <laughs> go ahead. No. So when did you, when'd you, uh, when you get into music? How would you get into music? I just was... um. Watching a lot of, you know, had bands on TV back then. You know, you as could a, see music as a kid, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, between reruns of Glenn Miller uh -huh. and Tommy Dorsey, Ricky Ricardo, and then uh, the Tonight Show Band mm -hmm. and and guest appearances by Count Basie, you saw music, live music was in your face, not like it is now. So when you heard jazz... Did it hit you initially, or did you ha it take you some time to mm -mm, understand? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I was in it. I was in it right from the get go. Really? Because my parents had a, a a big record collection. Okay. And they played jazz around the house all the time. You know, we had one stereo, and it was a pecking order. Uh -huh. You know, your parents when they get sick, your older <laughs> siblings uh -huh. when they get sick of playing, and my older sister then she gets sick of playing. Then you can play what you want. <laughs> but by the time it got to where I had access to it. They were playing all of the stuff I wanted to hear anyway, so wow. I so, just sat back there and just listening. So you come from a what, do you come from a musical family? Yeah, they, they didn't play instruments; they play records. <laughs> 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 but you, you, did you anybody play? Mu you, are you the only musician? No, 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 no. Um, my older brother, well, both my brothers. Okay, I had a brother, sister, me, and then brother, sister. Okay, and both my brothers played trumpet. Okay. And both of my sisters played flute. Gotcha. And I was in the middle just... Were they serious? Or did they just kind of do it as it's in school? and they kind of Mostly no further than um, getting a high school you know, diploma. You know, they didn't yeah. play much past yeah, that. Yeah. You know, but they played in school and stuff. But at some point, you fell in love with music. You said at the age of 10, you started playing... And I read about this. Yeah, I started alto? playing alto. But I was already in it by then. I mean, I was like... Three or four years old, got a plastic saxophone for Christmas. You know, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, yeah. you know how those little things are, right? And I'm all up in the air and everything. Just yeah. like I seen, you know, the people do, like, you know, yeah, yeah. like Chuck Berry and Little Richard's band. Yeah. You know, back then, them rock and rollers always play with the horn up in the air. So yeah. I was like, I can do that. 
Yeah. And there's a band across the street, and they used to play, man. And they were, they weren't that good, man. Really? They weren't. No, they 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 played the horse for like hours. Wow. And and it sounded terrible. And you can and, and all you wrong notes. I said when I grow up, I'm gonna learn how to play a horn so I can walk across the street, show them how to play that that song. And right. you could tell, and you could tell as a kid that they sound bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I was young, man. Uh, you know, you are gonna, gonna trip. I used to uh, cut a piece of wood and put some nails in it and put rubber band. And I thought I was Elvis Presley. Yeah, ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would, <laughs> well, you know what, man? I think everybody that ever built their first guitar did yeah, this. <laughs> it involved a nail, a yeah, rubber band, and, and, and a piece or, of wood. Or, or, or a string. You know, if yeah. you, you had some folks that went fishing, yeah. you put the line tied real tight, yeah. and <laughs> whatever. But, wow. you know, back then, you could make an instrument out of anything. I used to remember, the, um, um, I think they were like pixie sticks, but they had the sugar powder stuff uh, in there. Yeah. And wow. then they had the big ones. Uh -huh. That were plastic, man. I cut. I took that out, cut some holes in that thing, and put a saxophone mouthpiece on it. Man, I was playing. Wow! <laughs> you could make an instrument out of anything, and then we ain't even gonna talk about pots and pans and spoons yeah. and stuff. So, did you study formally, like when you were coming up? Yeah. Okay. I did. At, I, at, I, at what age? At ten. Okay. So you. Yeah. At ten, you start. That's when I, you start I started going to school, playing in the okay. band, and everything. So, so let me ask you this: When did you learn? You had perfect pitch. And for those who don't know what perfect pitch is, is you can play a note and he can tell you a note uh, you play. So what note is this? Ah. Uh, it's an E flat. You see that? <laughs> no, no, no. But you know what? <laughs> and I tried to, to, to break down the mystery of perfect pitch, and this is what I came up with. It's associated with your memory. Yes. Because the thing I know about people that have perfect pitch have is great. they remember other things that you know a lot of people don't like. For me, yeah. it was like area codes and birthdays. Yeah. Yep. And you know, just, you know, I always had that you know insignificant stuff. You know, people's birthdays from when I was in elementary school. Yeah. Never haven't seen. Them I since. noticed it. Yeah. So and, and here's what I'm I'm, uh, I'm going to explain to you. Mm -hmm. If I sit there and play a note on the piano, mm -hmm. you know, I could sing that note now. But if I went boom, went to lunch and came back, could I match that? If you have a memory, wow, you can remember that, and you can come back and sing that note without having to play it again. And that's what perfect pitch is: is the this the ability to retain vibrations or, or, or tones or whatever or now, notes. How, how old were you when you discovered you had perfect pitch? I was in. Let me see, Mr. Tyler. I might have been about eleven or twelve. Wow, I and I didn't know it was a big thing. Really? I, I mean. It, it was just normal, it, natural. It, I thought it was just normal. I thought everybody could do that. Wow. I I, I had a, I was teaching a second grader. And mm -hmm. he, was, he was mildly autistic. And I discovered his per perfect pitch. I said, I said, I, I noticed he had these good ears. Because he would, you know, he would just play stuff and not miss a note yeah. on on these little bells. I said, I said, go over there. That little eight bars yeah. um xylophone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was and he could just not and I said, I said, Timothy, go over there. I said, okay, this is a C. I gave him about three notes. Yeah. And I said, what's this? He said, E or C, mm -hmm. E, G. So the, he knew the names of them? Once I associated the name with the sound, yeah. he had it. And then I gave him all the black keys on the piano. And he was, and it wasn't even, and I'm like, how, how you do <laughs> Man, it, it just blows me away. I mean, and he did it without straining. Yeah. It's like, now, it's just something, man. It, it blows me away how you can do that. And, and, and that's the thing, because I've been trying to approach this from a standpoint of not having it. Really? You know, yeah. You know, Another this is, I, see, you know, if I can kind of like navigate through these waters. Don't it, try to get rid of it. I'm, I'm not trying to get rid <laughs> of it. Don't try to get rid of it, because I'll take it if you don't want it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. Oh, man, because... I'm still trying to man figure out these ears, you know, you know, and uh, you know, and another thing about your memory, man. That's what I know. I mean, how do you remember all this? I mean, you got these horn parts, man, and you know, I need music. You know, how do you remember this stuff, man? It's it's just memory. Now, as I've gotten older, mm -hmm. and my memory is not what it used to be, uh -huh. my perfect pitch is starting to drift too. Really? Yeah, I'll hear a note now, and I'll think it's a B flat. 
mm-hmm. and it's an A. Okay. And I have to step back and regroup. It's like, you know, just sit there and just refrag and sing the note as I remember in my head and then match it. And I was like, okay, I know I'm going to have to step off. So does each note have a different color? No. No? They yeah, all... It's not color. It's just the wave. Oh, it's the it's the actual vibration? That yeah. You, you're hearing the vibration of the I'm, I'm hearing, you know, when I hear, uh-huh. I know that's 440. Wow. So you hear the vibrations. I mean, it, it's just the pitch. I remember what 440 sounds like. <laughs> and, and, and and it's funny because, you know, we're doing sound and stuff. Mm-hmm. And the, the guys out there, and it's, it feeds back at a certain thing, and they can't figure out what frequency it is. Mm-hmm. I can tell what frequency it is just by associating it with a note. You know, it's a and that's doo, and that's 220, and mathematically it comes in half, doo, and half of that is 110. Wow. It, it, it's every octave doubles. Yeah. If it goes up an octave, it's double. If it goes down an octave, it's half. So do you think someone can learn to develop perfect pitch? Or you think you just, the, a part of your mind is got... You know, just have it. I can't say. Mm-hmm. I can't say because I, I, I think that the thing that gives somebody perfect pitch is not necessarily associated with learning it. Now, I will say this. If you've been in band, a high school high school band or coming mm-hmm. up, first thing you do every day is tune up. Mm-hmm. All right, play B flat. Mm-hmm. That might be stuck in your head the rest of your life. No doubt. Just... From having that drain, you know, you just yeah. not drill mine. into you like that. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> but look, say, man, it's... you know what I know, and you are a prime example. <laughs> not having perfect pitch does not stop you from kicking a whole lot of oh, ass on man. your instrument. No, I need it. Oh, I, 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 but you know what, though? If I could, it, bu- there's dozens of people, millions of people like you that don't have it. That just do just fine playing music because they learn the other yeah, aspects yeah. of it to a degree where the perfect pitch. If is I had ten thousand dollars and I could buy a perfect pitch, I'm buying perfect pitch. <laughs> you know what, though, man? That might throw you off. Yeah. Well, that might that might really that might be the it thing. Might, that, it, it, might, it might destroy. Every, it might negate uh, everything that you've learned up to that point. Wow. So let me ask you. If it ain't my, broke, don't fix it. When, okay. No, I'm, I'm, st- <laughs> I'm already broke. I'm trying to fix it. It's broke. <laughs> I'm getting better. Well, you know what I'm learning, man? What? I'm starting to sing. Like, I'm working on some stuff where I'm singing. Mm-hmm. And that's really helping me. Because a lot of times when you play an instrument, and I learned by reading. That's how I learned to play. Yeah. And so if you, pre- you know... Press that first thing as a B. If I, so I associated music, you know, with seeing something, you know. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're actually singing that note or listening. You just play, you, you're just pressing the key and you're getting that note. Yeah. What I'm doing now, what I'm working on is actually singing lines, and I'm learning that that's helping my ear. That's going to help you so much. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is my wife and I are just having this discussion the other day. Mm-hmm. We're watching... Well, she's watching because I don't like them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the <laughs> voice contest shows. Yeah, yeah. And this kid that she's just like, oh, he's going to win the whole thing. He's going to. He's he's a shoe in, right? Uh huh. He's having a bad night. Mm. And she's like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it was like you said, it was a monitors or something. Then somebody else sang, and they were having a bad night. So I'm thinking, whoever was doing sound that night was Dude. handicapping these kids. Wow. And I tried to explain to her that you don't have the ability to sit there and go boom or boom or whatever. When you sing, you have to manufacture that note yourself yes, and no make doubt. it match everything else that's yeah, going on. No yeah. And if your monitors are screwed up, you, you're at a handicap. You know, wow. you're at a disadvantage trying to do that. No doubt. And and I explained to her, you know, that, that's how that right. is. It's, it, it's all, and not only do you have to hear it. But your muscles have to be conditioned to produce the pitch that you want to sing yeah. or you, that you're trying to hear. Yeah, Singing is hard. Yeah. A lot of people don't know what goes like the, the mental stress as a performer. Yeah. And, you that, know, that's the other thing. Who you add playing? nerves on top yeah. of that, man. <laughs> and who you playing with, how you're affected by who you're playing with, you know, the sound of the, you know, can, I can't hear the bass, you know. Um, the way somebody plays, it can affect the way your equilibrium in terms of playing, mm-hmm. you know, you know. But I noticed, um, let me ask you this question. Yeah. 
when you improvise, are you playing by ear? Are you hearing it? Or you know the changes in your head and you're playing off of that? What, how do you approach it? I, I listen to the changes. Uh -huh. I, I, I try to, you know, I try to get into the environment of mm -hmm. each chord. Okay. You know, and, and, you follow and, the and sound? if they go too quick, I might do every other chord or something, but. But you follow the sound. Yeah, I follow the sound. You yeah. know, you can hear the chords, you can hear the scales within. You know, a cat, you know a cat that's great with Brian Mills. Yeah. Brian has perfect pitch too, and I remember uh, Brian when he in at Howard, uh, he was playing alto. You know, he, he had to, but man, he picked up that tenor man, and I'm telling you, man, you could you can, you can put one of them Wayne Shorter songs on him. Mm -hmm. But they, but they, and man, he plays all the. He just plays the right notes, man. Brian Mills, man, that cat. He he's that he's that dude. Yeah, he just and he has not just in the area, but one of the prettiest, most that, yeah yeah just, earthy yeah. Turner sounds yeah. I've ever heard. Y'all must be cut from the same tree, man, because he memorized all that stuff too. <laughs> now, now uh, on, uh, we touched on something we discussed earlier. <laughs> His birthday is three days away from mine. He's 22nd of September, mine's 25th. Okay, but so maybe it has something to yeah. do with that in the, the cosmos. Everybody's yeah. born that week. Because, you know, on the same time, you got Train on the 23rd. Okay. Yeah. Ray Charles on the 23rd. Oh, wow. So, you know, that, that might was be a good week to yeah, have a yeah. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, man, Brian, man, he's, I mean, when he's playing more jazz at, at, in college, mm -hmm. and, man, he would just, he would play. All the right notes. It wasn't no over. He just, and it sound good. And he had that sound, man. And, and I was like, everybody that got perfect pitch seemed like to have that that musicality. And this, this one, I, and when you talk about Brian Mill, now this is what I know about saxophone. When you play the notes with the left hand, they're not as thick as the notes that you play with the right hand because it's more horn to go through. Okay. So it, you know, uh, a C concert on an alto is going to sound like that. Uh -huh. C concert on the tenor is going to have all six of them fingers. Watch. So it's going to be a, a thicker. His his notes right around C, E flat, and E, the way that those notes come out of his horn yeah. is just unbelievable. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's it, butter. And, yeah. and and I understand why, and I'm glad I don't play saxophone anymore because it's the never-ending search for the right sound. Yeah. Some you, people, get the, yeah. you get the right mouthpiece, yeah. then you got to get the right read. Then it's like, okay, now I need another horn. You get another horn, and <laughs> yeah. now the, the, the reading the mouthpiece <laughs> don't fit that anymore. Yeah. And it's just constant, man. Yeah. And and the thing of it is, you would, and you can hear people's mm -hmm. DNA, mm -hmm. but the person that's playing is so much more picky yeah. about how they sound, and, and that's why they keep changing, changing, changing. Some people just got it, like you know, like Train, man. Train, he just had a sound. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was just part of his structure of his. It was just, you know, and, and, and that's the other thing that comes into play. I mean, you know, jaw bones, yeah. teeth, <laughs> exactly. you know, your, your, your inner cavity, yeah. as yeah. I like to call yeah. it, man. So, man your tongue, the, the whole layout and construction of the inside of your mouth. Exactly. And you know how much air you put through. <laughs> so how did you go from what? Why did you switch from saxophone to trombone? I mean, how did that happen? Well, it was a few things in between. Okay, let's First talk, of all, okay. talk about my, my brother. He played trumpet. Okay. Now, when he was 18, he left the house and moved to Detroit so he could build cars and work at the assembly line. Uh -huh. And he left his trumpet in the closet. Now, it was off limits when he lived there. He's like, you don't touch Bernard's trumpet. Wow. You know, yeah. you just, you just yeah. stay away from that, man. Yeah. You know, he can kick your ass. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but because he was gone, I was like, okay, now Let I got that. <laughs> So now I'm listening to Lee Morgan and Maynard Ferguson right around this time. Uh -huh. So I'm like, da, 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 da. So I just broke code on it. You know, I learned about the overtone series uh -huh. and then how, you know, each valve is an extension of the tubing. Yeah. Which, you know, comes into play when you play trombone. Mm -hmm. You know, the valves are just, you know, positions mm -hmm. under your fingers. Mm -hmm. So I taught myself how to play trumpet. Now, I'm playing my third year in school, I'm playing Barry Sax. Now, you in high school or you in college? I'm in uh, middle school. Middle school. Yeah, okay, I'm wow. playing I'm playing Barry Sax in seventh grade. Wow. 
uh, Kim Gossett, who played tuba, mm -hmm. was in eighth grade, but he was going to high school the next year, so it wasn't going to be no tuba player. Uh -huh. I said, I bet I can do that. <laughs> really? So my eighth, when I, when I uh, got into eighth grade, I started playing tuba. I left the saxophones behind. Wow. You know, How you gonna leave the saxophone behind? I ain't leave it behind, behind. Now my first was it fun playing the saxophone to you? Yeah. Oh, you just had an int you just was kind of one that I was like I was instrument curious. <laughs> now I got a guitar when I was in seventh grade. Okay. I got a bass when I was in ninth grade uh -huh. because I ain't like guitar. The strings too tiny. You know, I ain't uh -huh. developed the calluses uh -huh. yet and it hurt. Yeah. But I like I just had a thing for lower octaves, which is why I ended up on Barry. And wow. why I ended up on and you tumble. got that low voice too on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you ca when when you catch me in the morning and it's the first thing you hear, yeah, yeah <laughs> you down in the basement, man? yeah. No. But I sound like Mike Tyson by dinner time. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, man, this cat voice, he sound like Barry White, man. I'm like, okay, no, but I gotta tell you about tuba. So I, I played tuba in eighth grade, and. I'm going. I'm picking this thing like a duck to water. Mm -hmm. I tried out for like the Tri County All Star, whatever you know, Charles County, Calvert County, mm -hmm. St. Mary's. You know, they mm -hmm. had this thing. I'm in eighth grade. I'm in middle school, mm -hmm. and I beat all of the other tuba players in high school. Wow! So I sat first chair from that year all the way up until I. And graduated. how long were you playing it before before this time? I was playing tuba maybe about not even a year. Wow. That's when you know you got a gift. <laughs> I just like, okay. And you taught yourself? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I didn't start taking formal lessons till I was maybe in 10th or 11th grade. Oh, wow. Because, um, yeah, my mom was like, yeah, he took that kind of quick. Mm -hmm. And she got me my own tuba for my, uh, my senior year. Oh, wow. It was a C tuba. They uh -huh. said, if you're going to be serious about playing tuba in an orchestra, you got to C. You know, that yeah. B flat, yeah. the yeah. bands and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, we're talking about orchestras. You uh -huh. know, and hoity toity and, yeah. you, yeah. Know, wow. you know, Grey Poupon and all yeah. of that. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I had to get a C tuba. So, but my first gig was on tenor. Really? Yeah. I was 15 oh, years old playing tenor. Really? Yep, and they were, he used to call me Little Grover because I had <laughs> I had Mr. Magic down to a science. Man, Gro hold on. Grove was my dude. My, I know. Grove was my if, dude. If you were a sax player and you live in Philly, Grove was it. Man, let me tell you something. I had two cats that impacted me as a kid. Charlie Parker and Grover Washington. Yeah. I mean... And I was blown away by both of them. Grover was my dude, man. So, you, yeah. Because you know what the, the thing about Grover is, you know, there's a lot of guys that play, you know, what we call, you know, contemporary or quote-unquote mm -hmm. smooth jazz mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you listen to these guys, and they play the stuff, mm -hmm. whatever. When you listen to Grover back then, and he, he laid the template for all of that, but you could tell. The well-trained ear always knew that he had a whole lot more left in the tank. Yes, sir. No doubt, man. And, he, and, I mean, he was, oh, man. and if you ever want to get a good, you know, a recorded version of him, that um, Earth Tones. Earth, okay. Yeah. When he does a tenor solo later on in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's yeah. playing soprano yeah, at yeah. first. He switches a tenor. Yeah. And he digs a couple of things out in there. It's like, whoa. Yeah. Man, Grove, man. He cool. he plays big boy saxophone. No doubt. And he's there's a few cats that come along, man, and they changed. I mean, he, his his approach, his sound, mm -hmm. and his approach was just so unique, man. He was an innovator. But you know what? A lot of people don't know about Grover. What really sets him apart? You know those little grace notes. Uh huh. His are always whole steps, not half steps. I see only only cat with perfect pitch can hear all that. <laughs> No, it, it, it's, really? it's attention to detail. Next time you go back, he goes. It's a, if he goes, if he goes up to uh, yeah, like a, a, a G, yeah, a, a tenor G, yeah, he doesn't do he doesn't do uh, F sharp. F sharp. He yeah. does F to G. See, I did, oh man, see, and, and it's little things like that that separate you, and and nobody knows. Everybody just knows it's different. You done, but, he done gave it up. He done gave away the secret. I know, man. <laughs> okay, so you. I feel like you're going to cooking the show. Now. Yeah. So you on you on tuba. Mm-hmm. Now you, is this going into college? 
Yeah, I, I was a tuba major in college. Now, what, what college you go to? I went to St. Mary's College down in Southern Maryland. Okay. Now, all through school, I played bass in church. I played, yeah. Oh, God. I played tenor in a funk band. <laughs> I played trombone in the high school big band. So, now how'd you and get I to played trombone? tuba, huh? You didn't tell us how you got to trombone. I what? was um, in, um, I was in middle school. Mm-hmm. And there was a song called uh, Colonel John or something. Uh -huh. Trombone players almost on cue would always miss that A natural. They play A flat. You know, wow. like, duh, 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 mm -hmm. duh, duh, that needs to drive me nuts. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to go home, break code on this horn, and then I'm going to come back the next day and say, hey, man, it goes like this. <laughs> and, and it's funny how that was the reason why in a lot, in a few instances, why I want to learn how to play such and such an instrument, just to go back and say, no, 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 you got it all like wrong. This. See, you know my fog horn, leg horn. Wow. <laughs> oh, y'all wrong. See, but you, so what made trombone become your principal instrument? Cause I, you, do you still play saxophone, or you kind of do it at home? And mm -mm. um, you, Eric Lee's, we were doing some video or something up there, and um, with, with, with Prince, and Eric says. I'm not going to do this, need a saxophone player. But he didn't want to do it. I don't know why. Uh -huh. But he says, you do it. Now, he had this 1935 con. Uh -huh. It was a beautiful sounding horn. And mm -hmm. he said, you don't, I said, you mind if I play it, do you? He said, nah, no problem, go ahead. I was playing it. And after about 10 minutes, I had no embouchure left. <laughs> oh, you got your chops to Yeah, my chops doing. <sighs> It was air going all out yeah. of the sides, man. <laughs> yeah. All over the place, man. I was like, okay, you know, I'm just not conditioned. Yeah. To, I can, uh -huh. you know, if I work on it, yeah. but I'm just not conditioned. But that's another conditions. thing with that brass, though. That's a whole nother kind of muscle. Yeah. Yeah. So you you you, you set it on trombone. So were you gigging um, in D.C., around the D DMV, mm -hmm. um, during that time, like on, on sax? Yeah. Who, some of the, who, were you, who were you performing with? I played with this band called The Chosen Few. Okay. And what kind of band was that? It was just a funk band, you know, we mm -hmm. used to cover stuff. You know, that's that was the thing that had bands back then everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like a, a jukebox was just like, yeah, uh, you know, you want yeah. a live band. Yeah, yeah. So I'm in there playing with like grown ass people and there's liquor and stuff <laughs> everywhere. And my little young ass. <laughs> the, now <laughs> I'm, I'm driving my I'm driving my mom's Monte Carlo to these gigs, but everybody else in the band they own their car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so I'm this kid, man, and and we would do the jam by uh, Graham Central Station. Mm -hmm. I said, let me do the keyboard solo. <laughs> really? You playing keyboards too? <laughs> man, how you not play all these issues? <laughs> I broke code on them, man. Everything is about vibration. If you can figure out how to shorten the string. Raise the pitch, or in, uh, in the case of wood, went open up some more holes or whatever. Change the notes. I just figure out how to change the notes on everything. And I'm sure learning all the instruments help you as a arranger. Yeah, yeah. Cause you, you, did you arrange some like when we played with the Thad Wilson uh, Jazz Orchestra? Mm -hmm. You arranged. You, you, you brought us some charts, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that, man. And you, so you, you understood. It's one thing to arrange for instruments, but when you know the. The nuances of those instruments that, you know. That. I've been arranging since I was 11. Wow. Once I figured out, you know, I mean, I learned how to read music. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay. And I'm listening to some Lou Rawls. Mm -hmm. And he did a, a song called Your Good Things About to Come to an End. Wow. And I love the horn parts in it. It was so rich. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it was like augmented, you know, five chords uh -huh. and stuff. And I didn't know what they called, uh -huh. but I knew what the notes were. Mm -hmm. And I was like, now nah, if I add a couple more extra notes in there, <laughs> and I just I arranged it, you know, uh -huh. and I left it on the stand, and I came back to school, and my band director came and says, you did this? I said, yeah. He says, how, how did you figure that out? I said, I just heard it and wrote it down. So when you arrange, yeah. you not you don't need to be at a piano? Mm -mm, no. You could arrange right from in your head? Yeah. Man. See, that's why I call you when I need home parts. <laughs> <laughs> but Man, that really, is all, all you do is you arpeggi arpeggiate everything. Uh -huh. <clears throat> you know, you hear the chord, you break down each note in it, 
and then you assign each one of them notes to whatever instrument that you choose. When you say hear the chord, yeah. For some of us, we got to do that to hear the chord. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but you. <laughs> no, no, I ain't got it. That's amazing, man. Now, I might get lost in the inversions. Uh -huh. You know, I might, it might come out 5 3 1 instead of, you know, 3 5 1. So when you arrange it, <clears throat> does the end product usually come out how you hit, heard it in your head? Yeah. That's mad. See? And, and sometimes, you know, I'll sit there and say, you know, you know, sometimes you want an impact chord, and it ain't gonna yeah. be none of that one, three, five, you know, you know, yeah. book two kind of stuff. Yeah. And I was like, if I do this, that should, you know, be that should sound like, you know, like a punch on Batman. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, that might be what I'm going for, and those are the only kind of chords where I'm like, I don't really, really know, wow. but I have an idea. Wow. <clears throat> and so, you know, one thing I've, I've come, you know, I'm I'm fifty. 51 now. And I've learned, come to learn that all musicians are not created equal. <laughs> mm. It's it's amazing, man. Um, but being a teacher, what I learned is that people learn different. They process information different. Like some people break things down and they listen, to, you know, they, they have to analyze, okay, with the basis story. And it, it's and and then and with the drummer, and they have to then put it all back together. Mm -hmm. Some people hear they synthesize. Yeah. They hear it all together. Um, like right, you know, they hear everything together. And I had to learn how to listen and say, okay, let me let me turn off my analytical and hear everything, synthesize everything. Yeah. So that I can hear the the whole he, thing. Hear it together. as a cluster. Yeah. Yeah. And so and you know, so you do you synthesize more so than analyze every each instrument? Or do you, a little both. Oh, you, okay. A little of both. So, yeah, so, man, but... Because it, it, it's... Knowing how to play everything. Uh -huh. You know, there's certain things that you would ask a saxophone player to do that you wouldn't ask a trumpet to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. got to know the limitations of the instrument, what works best. You gotcha. know, if you want a really lush, thick chord, you want to make sure that the saxophone players are playing with both hands. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, the timbre is just so much different. Yeah. We were talking about yeah. that earlier yeah. when you used the whole horn. Yeah. And, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, back to what you were saying about being a teacher, man, I thought about how our teachers, when we were coming up, they would change classes and stuff. And they would learn 30 names. Uh huh. Then an hour later, they got to learn 30 more names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and then they, and the funny thing is, years later, those teachers would remember, remember those yeah, I, names. And it didn't stop there. Yeah. They, they, they would learn, you know, what you took to, what your strengths yeah, and your weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teacher, man, I, I just have to say, man, you know, on behalf of everybody <laughs> that understands, my hat's off to you, man. Oh, thank you, man. I have, I've, I've been trying to fight it for 20, almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. When I turned 50, I said, maybe I'm called to do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you were 50 before you realized. <laughs> I said, oh, man. I said, well, you know, man, because I wanted to be on the road doing my thing. But then I realized, you know, you know, when you when you get 50, it becomes about legacy. Plus, like, you're more honest with who you are at yeah, 50 than yeah. you are at 30. You still like, maybe I can do this, maybe I can do that. Yeah. I wanna do, you know, yeah. I want to do this, but you really need to be doing that. You don't yeah. know that when you're 30, yeah, but by the yeah. time you get 50, when you I know. When I turned 50, I said, man, maybe I'm supposed to be here. And I, and I began to look at teaching differently. Yeah. And it began to be more of a joy as a, you know, I, because I'm, I'm helping kids, helping, the, you know. Um, then you, I got kids that, are, that I taught that, I run into, yeah. and you start saying, "Man, I make I'm I'm not just down here doing, you know. Yeah. I'm making a difference, you know. So you were doing great work, <laughs> man. I appreciate you, so I, you yeah. know. But I'm gonna tell you, man. For 25 years, I've been trying to figure out how to get out of it. <laughs> 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 and, <laughs> so you know what? It, 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 it's almost a testament to just how difficult it is. Yeah. Now, you've had 20 years to see what the rewards are. Yeah. When somebody you taught when they were this tall all yeah. of a sudden comes up to you, yeah. and then they will tell you how much you made an impact on their lives. Yes. That's the thing about it. And, and you don't even, you know, most people want to get an immediate, like if you tell somebody do something, mm -hmm. if, if you teach them, you want to you get, teaching is like, you, the reward comes way down the line. 
I mean, think about how many things your parents told you that exactly. you ain't get till you were older. Yeah. So, so it, it's like, and then it helped me be a father. Because yeah. Because I had to learn patience. I thought, you know, this, and, you know, I came up, man, I'm like, man, I thought I was big, because I'm from the hood. I thought I'd be able to come and relate to the kids because I'm from the hood and all that. Mm -hmm. Man. <laughs> I had a kid tell me one day, Mr. Parker, we love you, but we're going to always make it hard on you. <laughs> but because, it, because that's their job. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the thing of it is, man, is there's no handbook to that. Exactly. Yeah. There, there's yeah. no formula yeah. for being a good teacher, yeah. a good father, a good parent, yeah. any of that. There's no formula for yeah. it because... The stuff that you are using it on, yeah, they're not all the same. Exactly. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's it's up, man. But I mean, they could be the fruit of your loins, but they couldn't be more different. <laughs> it's like, how come you know? Okay, if you my kid, then you should y'all should be alike. Yeah. It, no. Yes, yeah, it's, it's 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 yeah. It all of these people are as individual as fingerprints, and it's up to you to figure out. It, it's situation by situation. Yeah, it's crazy, man. But back to the music, yeah. you know. So, did you graduate? Did you graduate from St. Mary's? Did no, you? I didn't. What happened? I joined P Funk. Oh God! <laughs> you hear that? P Funk. All of it. No. How no, did let, that happen? No, let me tell you how that happened, man. Come on. Now, I'm in. First off, I'm a lousy student. I have no discipline. You know. I, I you know what? I don't believe that, man. You got to. You know why I know you have discipline? Because I remember when we were on the road, and man, you. I'm looking at your suitcase and how you neatly put your clothes in the suitcase. Because I'm too lazy to iron. That's the only reason why I do that, man. <laughs> really? Really. That's the only man. reason why I fold that stuff the way I do, man. Because not, it's not so much being too lazy to iron, is you don't always have access. Okay. First off, you carry an iron with you. That's extra weight. You know, <laughs> you know, you don't want to go over 50 pounds because then they're going to charge you extra for the luggage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then... You know, if you try to say, well, I just use the hotel iron, man, you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I've seen some iron, the man, <laughs> bottom of it look like liver. <laughs> i like, and if uh, I try to iron a white shirt with this thing, man, it's yeah. going to come out with, like, brown stripes <laughs> on it. Exactly. You never know. Wow. So I just fold everything up. Toop, toop, toop. Man, this just cat so right here, I look, I mean, walk in, he is the most organized cat. <laughs> I, you know, you, it's another cat <laughs> You know Tim Warfield, saxophone player. Yeah, he's like that man. They just y'all very particular. I'm I'm the total opposite. You know you know the people that go to the uh, laundry mat and they got to fold it. Man, I put all my stuff in the mat. <laughs> when you go to a laundromat, you don't always want to fold it at the laundromat. Man, I that, that's that's too public, man. Yeah, but you know the people folding their stuff, man. I, I I put that stuff in the bag and and go home. Yeah. what am I wear today? Look at the bag. Well, man, <laughs> I go to a laundromat in Europe, uh -huh. and somebody put this picture up, you know, because I'm out on the road, you know, mm -hmm. and road dogs and stuff, man. Place had, like, art on the wall. It looked like it had just opened up that morning. It was mm. that clean. Wow. So I'm in there folding my stuff, man. I ain't got a care in the world. Uh -huh. But, you know, um, Pookie and Ray Ray wash line. <laughs> I, I'm just bagging it, man. I fold it when I get home. Matter of wow. fact, I will double bag it so the heat stay in there. That's cat, man. <laughs> so you, so you started. Uh, oh, back to P funk. P funk. Yeah. yeah now, go ahead. I'm in my third semester, and I, I'm sucking. I won't go. I won't get up and go to English. You know, only thing I want to do <laughs> is, is play music. You know, uh, uh, on campus, off campus. Mm -hmm. You know, do some hookups. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And, <laughs> and that's all, man. Yeah. I ain't have a care in the world because mm -hmm. I wasn't paying for it. Yeah, that, that had a lot to do with yeah, it. Now, yeah. if I had to come out of pocket for that, I probably would approach it a little bit different. Yes, sir. But by my third semester, I realized I'm making a mistake going to school. I'm wasting my parents' money because mm. all the stuff I'm doing down here, I, I, I could do without having to go to school. Wow. So, and, and what really did it was me and, and Benny Cowan. And he's, mm -hmm. you know, we and I decided that we're going to take a break from this important, you know, winter concert coming up. We're going to go and hang out with this guy in Baltimore, go up to New York, and we're going to be like, we're horn arrangers. You know, I had my little leather briefcase really? and stuff. Really? Wow. We'll go out there. Now, guess who we met in this day? We went to Gambling Hall Studios. 
<laughs> in Philly? Yeah. Wow. Went to, uh, stopped the uh, rehearsal for Fat Larry. Went up to New York, or to Essex, met Eddie Kendricks. What year was this around? This is like 77. Okay, wow. And, you know, hang, uh, going up there and meet Eddie Kendricks. And we just going up there and, and you know, big boy meeting people. Yeah, right? yeah. And we up there. Now, I didn't realize it, but I was like, these kids were barely old enough to do anything. I, I can't take them serious. But we're thinking that we're, you know, on our way to doing bigger and better things. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So we left at 6 in the morning, and we get back down to school at, like, Midnight or 1 a.m. We're gone all day. We missed the rehearsal. And band director got upset. Wow. So he's like. Y'all missed a, perf- a rehearsal? Or oh, we missed a rehearsal. Okay. For the, a winter concert. Okay. So Benny's playing lead book. Mm-hmm. So he's going to demote Benny to fifth trumpet for missing a rehearsal. Benny? Now, not, not little Benny? No, big Benny. Big Benny. Benny. Okay. Cowan. Okay. Now, okay. Okay. More on that later. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm already playing bass bone and tuba. Uh-huh. So, you know, only thing you do me is just demote me is just put me out of the band. Because uh-huh. there ain't no more parts after that. Wow. So, so it just took away all my solos. So, wow. you know, we were thinking, Benny and I looked at each other and said, man, we don't need all this. <laughs> so, I, I, I just said... You know what, man? I'm gonna drop out and see what I can make and make some things happen. Uh-huh. Now it was in December of '77. Okay. Gone, left school, no more. How'd your and, parents and feel about that? They probably had issues with it. Uh huh. Did you have to tell? Did you have to explain that to them? Yeah. Were you scared? So my, so my were, mother were you was scared? like, "Well, if you're gonna quit school, you better find something to do." Okay. So we going. I'm hanging out with uh, Benny and I. Got mm-hmm. with Greg Thomas. Okay. You know, they had some band they were throwing together up in Baltimore. That fell through. Mm-hmm. What I did not know was Greg Thomas played in a band with uh, Rodney Skeet Curtis when he was in high school. Okay. And he's playing bass with P-Funk now. Okay. They have a shake-up over there, and they need a horn section. He calls Greg and says, get a horn section together. There's a gig happening. Now, wow. this is this is February. Uh-huh. So we, Benny, Greg, and I learned... Funk and Teleki versus Placebo Syndrome. All the horn parts. And we up there playing them, right? We hook up with P-Funk when they come to town at a hotel up in um, a security mall. Wow. And we and they in the room rehearsing. Uh-huh. And we in there playing. And we playing these horn parts. They're like, yeah, they kind of nice with that. Yeah. <laughs> so December 77, we quit school. We got the gig with P-Funk in March of 78. Wow. Totally unrelated. Did quit one, and, and I think that when you close one door, another one opens up. So was that was it at that time? Was P Funk were they were they on the come up or were they there? That was right when right after they released Flashlight. So you know they were smoking. Yeah, wow. They were still laying in the mothership, uh-huh. and, and they were like hot. They were hot potato by then. Really? Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for Michael y'all who don't yeah. know, Michael you know, his, his nickname is Hot Potato. <laughs> So. <laughs> wow. Man, that is crazy. Now, that's something about this music thing. Opportunities, they come. You don't know when they're going to come. No. You got to, you know. Um, you better have your gun loaded and your yeah. sword sharp yeah. all the time because you don't want to get ready. You want to be ready. Yeah, yeah. Now, I learned that later on Yeah. when uh, when I moved to L.A. Okay. You lived in L.A.? I lived in L.A. for oh, a year. Oh, man, I- Really? Yeah. How was that? I ain't like it. Really? Why not? That's why I only lived out there a year. Now, I'm going out there thinking, because, you know, in the Uh mid-80s, you know, P-Funk wasn't doing nothing, and it it just wasn't much going on around here. Mm -hmm. And I moved out there, you know. um, And this is, and you taking your bone with you. Yeah. Okay, and you and you just moved out there. Did you have a place to stay? Did you did you have a, how'd you? Well, it's. um, You just went on faith? My wife at the time. Okay. Um, she moved out there because her mom was living there. Okay. And so, you know, we were kind of there together for a minute. Then we got our own place down in, uh, down in Inglewood. Mm-hmm. We were living in the valley at first. But I was up there trying to make some things happen musically. Okay. And it, it's like it is in most cities, but even more so out there. If you ain't in the clique, then you don't count. Yeah, I heard that by L.A. Yeah. 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 Because, so I mean, it's L.A. It's people moving in there by the millions every day trying yeah. to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the people that are already established, they want to protect their yeah, little yeah, nugget. Yeah, 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 no but, doubt. But, but if somebody come through, 
that can really do some things, you yeah. know, they want to be able to say, I brought this person gotcha, in. Gotcha, 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 yeah. If, you know, they yeah. they, they, they don't have any security issues. Yeah, and wow. And I auditioned for Ray Charles while I was out there. Really? Yeah. I was playing in this uh, rehearsal band, and a guy named Tommy Cortez, trumpet player, says, you know, they got a trombone opening up for uh, Ray Charles' band. You might want to go down there and check it out. Wow. And Did you get to meet Ray? Uh-huh. Got to meet him. What was that like? He was just like, hey, man, how you doing? Mm -hmm. He liked the way I sounded. Mm -hmm. But a um, bunch of badasses, man. Yeah. Up yeah. there auditioning for that. It's Ray Charles, right? Yeah. yeah. But well, um, the guy that I was supposed to be replacing, uh, he decided he wouldn't want to leave. So he's going to keep okay, his Okay, once you take so, his gig. So, <laughs> no, you know, he's been doing it for years. and he, he, I want to take a break. Ah. Then, you know, you sit home for a minute. And you know, you get so conditioned with being on the road, you're like, no, I don't think I'm gonna go back out on the road again. Wow. So let's go back to P Funk, man. Yeah. Okay. Is this your first big gig? Yeah. Now, I'm playing down in St. Mary's County, you know, off campus down there, mm -hmm. dollar night, dirt on the floor. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh -huh. and, and little bands around there yeah. and stuff, man. So I wasn't doing it. I went from that to this. It was none of that work your way yeah, up. Yeah, it was. You know? <laughs> You know, little hole in the wall you, joints, and then the finer clubs in the city, and then all of a sudden I'm out there. It were was, you were you nervous at first? Really? Road manager said, "Y'all look nervous, man." Before the now, this is, now we're rehearsing. Uh -huh. I got I got to say this: we're in um, it's the first flight I ever had. Uh -huh. I flew into Nashville, mm -hmm. and then first I, flight, hmm? first flight, my first flight ever. Wow, going to play with the P, going to play with P Funk. Wow, so we go to Huntsville. Alabama is like a 13,000 seat arena. It's a pretty good size, mm -hmm. but it's Huntsville. They don't have like a, a hockey team or mm -hmm. a basketball team. Mm -hmm. And went to rehearsing, and I see George. George, George Clinton. George Clinton, he comes up. I was like, now, now you got to, um, the backstory is I'm a huge P Funk fan. You know, uh, artist too. I used to, Pedro Bell, they used to do all them album covers uh -huh, with Funkadelic. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He was my hero. Wow. As well as, you know, you see all the names W. Collins. Are you an artist? Hmm? You an artist? Yeah. Man, see. <laughs> you, a, you a visual artist? Well, you know, cartoons and, really? and stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. Now, my son, he he's whatever I was on steroids. He's scary. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know, he does art you know, okay. and, and, and tattoos and stuff. Man, he, that guy's just like, I look at him and I'm like, I don't even want to pick up a crayon now <laughs> with him around. Yeah. But, but um, so I'm a huge P-Funk fan. Mm -hmm. You know, matter of fact, before I got that gig, somebody down in St. Mary said, you will be playing with P-Funk one day. And I wow. laughed it off. Wow. <laughs> and lo and behold, it happens. So wow. I see George, and I'm like, it's him. It's him. Ah. And when I shook his hand, he was a human being. Mm -hmm. He was just a regular dude. And I was like, so that's how this works. Everybody's got persona, but when you meet them up close, it's, they just regular folk. Yeah. And that kind of thing followed me all the way up through my yeah. career, like when I met well, all the people I met. Yeah, we're yeah. going to talk about that. Yeah. But uh, so, so, you know, so, we're going to do the gig. I'm okay. nervous, right? Road manager comes and says, Y'all look nervous. Says, Here, I got something for that. It's a thick ass joint. Put some, some weed. Really? Real good weed. Really? Sit, here. Boom. Sit here. Smoke that, man. I was so chill when I got up there. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. I was like, yeah. wow, that's funny, man. And, and, and that's, but you know what? What I figured out too was the way lighting is, mm -hmm. you don't see the whole arena. If they played with every all the lights on, it mm -hmm. would be different. Mm -hmm. But when it, they turn the lights off, mm -hmm. now only the stage lights, yeah. you can't see past the first 10 rows. Now, how many people was in that band when you joined? When I joined, it might have been about, I'd say, maybe somewhere between 12 and 15. Damn. Now, were you, did, they, did they pay you good? It was good for me, man. So, like <laughs> I said, I'm making a buck a night, man. So, I mean, it, it wasn't a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And I didn't need a lot of money. Yeah. But I was happy. Yeah. You know, I could, you know, I could buy records. Yeah. I bought a car. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, were you touring a lot during that period? Was that, were y'all touring? Yeah. Touring? Okay. Yeah. And so. We would do two tours a year. And, and how long would it, 
each tour lasts? Uh, maybe a couple months, a few months. Okay. Yeah. Now, you have a way that when people bring you in a band, they find out you not you can arrange and you got all these other musical gifts. And did that up your stock? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you start did you start doing uh, arrangements, horn arrangements? Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, when, how did, how when did, I first did, got in P Funk, uh -huh. it was a collective effort. Okay. You know, I would throw in a line, Benny would throw in a line, uh Greg would throw in so a line. So it's organic, like y'all would just kinda just... You know, we would just get to these spots and they say, I got one for this section. And you know, and they carve it out yeah. and say, Okay, now we all together, and then they get the next part and say, and the other person say, I got one for this section. And, then, and you just heard it, you just had to hear it right there. Well, we sometimes we would uh do spontaneity, you know, uh -huh. right on the stage. You know, mm -hmm. we just Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. That way, everybody can learn it fast, and it, it, it's a it, it's a consorted effort. Okay, you know, it, it's not anything that involves a whole lot of rehearsal. As long as it's tight, it doesn't have to be you know uh, nuclear fission or anything like that. Yeah. So, did you develop any like a personal relationship with George Clinton or anybody in the band? That oh, was... certainly. Really? Yeah. And y'all was cool. We were all cool, man. And you know, even when we weren't cool, we got cool eventually. <laughs> so what was I mean you spending that much time around people there're going to be people that you like there're going to be people that get on your nerves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know people that you know I was close with at some point were just like man I can't stand yeah 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 it, it could be me could be them yeah but you know being out on the road man and then you get to a certain point we'd be like you know I wish I was home yeah once you start feeling like that then yeah. you got some edge on you yeah yeah no doubt <laughs> yeah so uh how did that? Uh, now you didn't have kids when you were, did. You have any kids when you were touring? No. At the time. No. Okay, so that that worked out. So you it, were, it you did. were young. No, I, I started touring in '78, and I didn't have my first kid till eight years later. Okay. So. And was that the end? Did you still tour with them after that? After yeah. You had a kid. Yeah. How was that touring and then having a kid and all that? And, and you were married them soon. Yeah, I was married, you know, that, split it, up, and then... Did, that, did the touring affect all that? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of guys that's out there on touring, they, it can affect your personal relationships. Right? Yeah, yeah, it does, man. I mean, shoot, I went through... I'm my third wife now. <laughs> wow. And, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm my third wife. Yeah, it can be rough, man. Or as Donna likes to say, she's my last wife. It's your, I got I like, <laughs> You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah man. You know, after a while you feel like you break code on this marriage thing and then you know and she's understanding the point she's like one you doing what you love mm -hmm. so I'm not I'm not gonna be one to ask you to quit yeah and you know I, I knew what you were when I met you yeah, when yeah. Met you, so <laughs> I'm not gonna sit there and say oh now that we married you know I want you to go work down at the plant yeah. so you be home <laughs> you know she ain't gonna do that to yeah. me and we had this thing called the three week rule Mm -hmm. And it, it, it went like this. If I'm out on the road for three weeks, because she said about three weeks, that's when I start to feel like I'm, you know, uh -huh. I got some edge. Yeah, uh -huh. you know, either I come home for a day or two if I have a break, uh -huh. or I fly her to wherever I am. Okay. And she can, you know, come and hang out with me for a little while, and then, you know, everybody's happy, and then we can. And work it out, yeah, that's what's up. But, um, yeah, that's the thing that we established early on. Now, yeah. Of course, you know, the first two times, man, I wasn't that smart about, how to, yeah. you know, how to do this. Yeah. Which is why, well, it could have been a selection process too, yeah. man, but, yeah. you know, it just, yeah. those marriages didn't work. But I can't be upset about that as much as, you know, nobody likes to fail anything, especially a marriage. Mm -hmm. I got three beautiful kids out of that. Beautiful, yeah. You know, thing. so uh, you know whatever I had to go through for them to be on this planet, and you know, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. have that as an extension of my yeah. love and everything, it was worth it to me. Gotcha. Got a couple more questions before we take a break. Yeah. Um, how long did you play with P Funk? How many? How many Nineteen years? years. Wow. And 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 what was it like? I mean, with a, I'm sure the. With, I wonder how did they make that space? How did all that the all that stuff? Did they? The stage, did they have stage yeah. people that did all that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we had a what, group. Was, what was it like, man, being on the stage? Because, you know, you can see it from the, as an audience 
as a spectator, yeah. but to be on the stage with it, it's got to be another kind of thing. Well, you know, it, it's just like anything. Once you know the secret to how it works, uh -huh. the mystery is, is, is gone. So, you know, those people not seeing that spaceship land every day, uh -huh. to them it's like, oh man, and then, a, and then a spaceship fell out the sky and George got out, I didn't know what I was looking at. Wow. But we knew how it worked. So, and, and he came out with diapers and stuff on this? Uh, he would come out with anything on. Sometimes he didn't have anything on. <laughs> Are you, what? He got out the mothership. Only thing he had on was a wig, a hat, and sunglasses. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> oh, man. Are you... <laughs> I can say this because... It's documented, and uh, anybody who's in that show, and I know you out there, I have witnesses. <laughs> he came down off the, off the space mothership mm -hmm. butt naked? Yep. Oh, man. That's <laughs> Only thing he had was his natural fur. <laughs> <laughs> and and we looked at that, it's like, oh. <laughs> Y'all didn't, didn't know he was going to come out like that? No, no, no. <laughs> you never know what he's going to come out in. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! So, real quick before we take a break, yeah, what's some mem like? You, are there any stories or 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 uh, that stuck that stick out in your your experience with P Funk? There's a, a million stories. I don't know where to start. Yeah, no, I, I, I will say this. You know, compared to the way people just roam this earth and do whatever they mm -hmm. do daily, mm -hmm. that was not a normal way of life. Okay, it, it was. I mean. Even from being a, a musician and stuff, I mean, you, you talk to other bands and stuff, you see how similar your experiences are. But the P Funk thing mm -hmm. is unlike anything that most people will or have experienced. And I, I think that there were some things that I learned from that and some things that I didn't learn from that. Mm -hmm. So, speaking so, of things you learned, it's going to be my last question before we take a break. Mm -hmm. What did you take away from that experience as as an evolving musician? What did you learn? And I'm sure all these little experiences with different people yeah. taught you something. What did you learn? What sticks out um, with your experience with P Funk? The presentation of the show, mm. you know, from the music to the visual and everything, yeah. and the respect for groove. Wow. You know, yeah. everybody, you know, just wants to play the the, the, the hot ass lick or whatever that gets you on the news at eleven uh -huh. or you know, yeah. in a in a in some kind of Berkeley or Juilliard video. Yeah. The respect for the groove, the mm. underlying current of the pulse, mm. you know, yeah. all that stuff yeah. to take you way back to the motherland. Yeah. You know, and they yeah. didn't have all that stuff. It was just all about pulse. Yeah. It talks. It has power. Wow. And it, and, and it has magnetism. Wow. And when you respect that, and it doesn't have to be funk. Mm. It, it could be any music. And once you respect the mm -hmm. underlying sine wave that is the groove, it, wow. it's communication in that. Wow. And the stronger that is, the, the better you reach people with it. He teaching. This boy teaching. Man, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to take a little break. We're going to come back. With this. We're going to talk about some other uh, institutions Certainly. you've performed with. Okay. You know, but this is a conversation in jazz, and we're talking to the great Greg Boyer, and we'll be right back. 